Kripiti. I'm Hashleen Kaur. So today let's take an example of a huge online retail store that is Amazon. And every minute uh, data has been generated in the form of customers buying or selling uh, products. And Amazon needs to make critical decisions all based on customer activities. And for this it uses various data mining techniques, one of which is OLAP. So we're going to be studying that in the further lesson. And also please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hi everybody, welcome to lesson number 5, that is OLAP versus OLTP. I'm Hashleen Kaur and this is a small description here about myself. So starting off with what is OLAP? So as we studied in the previous lesson, OLAP is nothing but online analytical processing and it basically helps a user to selectively extract some data from a data set and view it from various different points. And OLAP helps us to process selective business intelligence queries. And um, uh, basically, OLAP is the second stage and OLTP is the first stage. But as of now, recently, OL OLAP has become more widely used than OLTP for any business process. And uh, OLAP basically has all the historical data stored and it allows analysis on both historical and present data. And o OLAP is organized hierarchically and it is stored in cubes instead of tables. We don't have any relational databases here. We have a cube stored here using which we model it into a multidimensional database. So let's see example, uh, sorry, differences between OLAP and OLTP. So um, OLAP basically deals with lesser transactions and the queries are a little more complex than OLTP and it is widely used in all the data mining techniques and here the data is stored and historical data is aggregated in multi-dimensional schemas. Whereas in OLTP, so in, OL, in OLTP, what happens is it is it stands for online analy uh, online transaction processing, and here we use uh, certain SQL queries such as insert, update, delete, and it is a little more faster than um, OL OLAP, but it does not acquire the amount uh, similar as to OLAP. That is here uh, only current data is present, but in OLAP also historical data is present as we as we saw. So moving further, these are a few differences between OLAP and OLTP that I've jotted down. So you all can also read that. And um, so uh, firstly, it involves historical processing of information. And here it, it involves current processing of information that is day to day. And here OLAP is used by a little high management that is by analysts, management or people to make better decisions. And OLTP is used by um, database administrators or maybe by clerks etc and this is used to analyze the entire business this is used to run the business but not to make decisions and um, OLAP is uh, used is, uh, sorry OLAP contains historical data and this current uh, contains current data it provides a complete summarized multi-dimensional view of data it provides a detailed flat view of data in form of tables yeah, the database size of OLAP is 100 GB to 1 TB, but the database size of uh, OLTP is only 100 MB to 1 TB, which is very, very less. And here, millions of records can be accessed in minutes. And here, uh, the number of records which can be accessed is very, very less. So um, there are uh, there are four types of OLAP servers that we have to be studying about. So the first one is a relational OLAP. The second one is a multi-dimensional OLAP. Third is hybrid OLAP. And the fourth one is a specialized SQL server. So firstly, what is a relational OLAP? So relational OLAP, also known as ROLAP, is, are the servers which are placed between relational backend server and client front-end tools. So it is placed right in between uh, between the backend and the front-end tool. And it basically helps us to manage and store the data warehouse. Uh, <coughs> and or, uh, ROLAP uses the relational database uh, tables. And it basically is very important to uh, implement the main logic and uh, also to optimize the database backend. 
Coming to multidimensional OLAP, multidimensional OLAP basically is called as MOLAP and here it uses array based multidimensional engines which is used to view the data in various uh, different dimensions. So uh, MOLAP is uh, basically uses two levels of data storage to handle very huge or dense data sets or spa data sets. So that is when multidimensional OLAP is used. Next comes hybrid OLAP. So hybrid OLAP is a combination of both relational OLAP and multidimensional OLAP. And it basically offers much better scalability than relational OLAP and faster computation than multidimensional OLAP. And a hybrid OLAP server always allows us to, to store huge amounts of data and here all the data is stored in separate aggregations. Then talking about SQL specialized servers, these basically use a certain simple SQL language such as update, uh, delete, insert, etc. Simple SQL queries and they help us in, uh, in, in extracting data not only from the SQL queries, but all over the star and the snowflake schema, but in a read only environment. That is, we can only like view the data or we can maybe insert some data, but we can never edit the data here. So uh, let's take a real life example. So uh, as you all can see, this, this thing here is called as an OLAP cube. And talking about a real life example here, um, the problem statement is that a user uh, wants to request that the data to be analyzed should be displayed in a spreadsheet and uh, it should show all of a company's beach ball products that has been sold in Florida in the month of July that is in July and it wants to compare the revenue figures of the same product that is the beach ball products in September. So that is the first thing that it wants to do. It wants to uh, take the beach ball products, that amount of beach ball products sold in July and compare it with the same products sold in September in Florida. But it also wants to see a comparison of all the other products sold in Florida in the same period of time. So there are about three, three conditions that we can see here. So for this, the answer of how we're going to be doing this is using an OLAP. That is, for this, we're going to be storing the data into a multidimensional database. We're going to be forming a data cube and form various dimensions and then divide them into attributes according to uh, maybe the product or maybe the geographical geographic sales region. That is, we're going to divide Florida into various cities and then we're going to divide it into quarters. That is the time period and then try to maybe extract data from it as to these conditions and that is how these attributes can also be divided into various sub attributes. So this is the end of this lesson. Thank you so much. Please do rate, review and recommend our videos and you can also follow me on this link here in the learning app. Thank you.